Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you all are doing extremely well. So today's problem is transform a string. So this is the problem of the on the Geeks for Geeks platform. So we are going to understand this problem first. Then we'll be understanding the logic and then we'll be coding it up, right? So this is how it is going to be. But before proceeding further to the video, if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed my channel till now, then guys, please consider subscribing my channel. It will motivate me to create more such content for you, and I'm sure the channel will be helpful for you. So do subscribe my channel. So with that note, let's get started with the problem statement. So the problem says, given two strings a and b, find the minimum number of steps required to transform a string a. Into B, right? Okay, I hope that should be properly visible now. So the only allowed operation for the transformation is selecting a character from a string A and inserting it in the beginning of a string A. So what we have to do is we have to find the minimum number of steps that is needed to transform a string A to B. The only thing that we can do is uh, the only operation that for the transformation part, we can do is we can select a character from a string A and we can insert that into into the beginning of a string A, right? So that's what is allowed. That's the only operation that is allowed. For example, A B D D A B uh, B A D we have A B D and B A D. So we are getting output as one. So you can see how you can see how if we do what if we do the what the conversion can take place in one operation. How so? Pick B, this B, right? This B, this B here. And and place it at the front, right? So if you will place this B at the front, so it is going to be B A T. The string A is going to be B A T, which would be equal to a string B, right? So that's why we are getting output as one. Next is geeks for geeks, right? So here uh, we are getting three. So how? So the conversion can take place in three operation. So what we can do is in the string A, pick this R, pick this R, keep it at front, right? Now we will be left with what? This this string. So A is going to be now this. Now pick this O and place it at the front. So string A string is going to be now this, this, right? Now uh, pick F and place it at the front. So A is going to be now this for geeks geeks. And you can see this is similar to that of string B, right? So that's what it is. Now whatever task is, uh, we don't need to read input or print anything. We have to complete the function transform. Which takes two strings A and B as input parameters and returns the minimum number of steps required to transform A into B. If transformation is not possible, then we have to return minus one. Uh, coming to the expected time complexity, so big O n, where n is max length of A, comma length of B. Expected auxiliary space that they have specified is that is big O one. Right. So first of all, we'll be understanding uh, like how we can approach this problem, and then we'll be proceeding to the coding part. So let's understand now. So let's say this is the a and b value that we are having. So before uh, doing anything, first of all, we have to make sure that whether it is possible even to convert this a to b. Right. So we have to make sure this part first. So how you can make sure this? First of all, like the length of a and b should be equal. Also, what we can do is. The frequency of the characters, right? The frequency of the character in both these strings should be equal. Now, to determine the frequencies, we can use the hash map either, right? This is the one thing that we can do to make sure that the frequencies of the characters are same in both the strings. Other than this, what you can do is like if you will take a hash map, so obviously it will consume uh, extra space, right? So what we can do is you know like with each character there is a ASCII value associated, and that is same, right? So what we can do is we can sum up the these characters right so we can sum up the ascii values of these characters like for string a we did for string b we did the summation should be equal right if the characters in both the arrays are equal right if the frequency of the characters in both the arrays are equal then obviously what obviously what the summation will be equal so we'll be doing that part right we'll be just simply adding the ascii values of these characters that is occurring in both the uh, both the string right a as well as b and if the summation is equal it means that yeah we can make the changes right there's a possibility of conversion of a string a string a to b right otherwise otherwise if this is not possible if the summation is not equal then we will simply return minus one we will simply return what minus one okay so i hope that is clear so now if there is a like if it is possible to do the conversion then let's understand what we'll be doing so we are having these two arrays so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 here also let me put the index 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right. So what according to the question given to us that we can only operation that we can perform in uh, string A is that we can insert an element. We can insert an element from a string array A from a string A itself. Sorry, I'm saying array again. So sorry for that. Yeah, we can insert an element, a character from a string A itself at the front. Right. This is the only operation that we can do. This is the only operation that is allowed. So what we will do. We will start our uh, we will start our iteration. That's why from the last because in the front we are going to like we are going to think that we have to make the changes. Okay, so what we'll be doing is we'll be taking two pointers, i that is pointing to the string a, like here at the last at the last, and j pointing to the string b at the last. Right, so they are both pointing to the index twelve index twelve. Okay, so we will do the comparison. So s and s here is equal. So Reduce the value of i as well as j. K and k equal, reduce the value of i as well as j. E and e are equal, so reduce the value of i as well as j. G and g are equal, so reduce the value of i as well as j. Now here if you will here if you will do the comparison. So the character at the ith index is not equal to that of the jth index. So we will do what? We will decrement the value of i till the time we are not able to like we are not able to get the equal value. Right? So we will iterate further. Also, when you are doing this iteration, because see here, this character is not similar to that of S. So we have to do what? We have to place this R at the front, right? This is what happening when I was explaining that part in the explanation, even they do have a specify that R would be what? R would be placed at the front. So what we can do is see, we don't have to, they haven't asked us to make the actual changes in the string array, in the string A. Sorry, I'm, I don't know why I'm saying array again. Yeah, so string A. They haven't asked us to do the changes. They just wanted to know like how many minimum number of like how many number of operations would be needed, right? So that's what the question is. So what we can do is we can maintain a count variable, initialize this with zero, and do C plus plus, right? If this kind of uh, condition occurred. So here you can see that Jth as well as Ith character is not equal. So we will increment the value of C and we will reduce the value of I. So I would be pointing to this O num. So O and S they are also not equal. So C was before 1, now it is going to be 2. Then F and S, F and S are also not equal, so C value will be 3 now. Then S, so I will be pointing to this S, S and S equal, right? So reduce the value of I as well as J. K and K equal, reduce the value of I as well as J. E and E are equal, reduce the value of I as well as J. E and E again are equal, so reduce the value of I as well as J. G and G are equal, reduce the value of I as well as J. Now you can see we have consumed, we have traversed through all the characters of a string A. So we will stop down, we will stop down, right? So this is how it is going to be. You can see we have got our answer 3, right? 3, okay? So see, 3 we got because if you are, if you are putting this R at the front, right? O at the front and F at the front. So you can see A and B has become equal. A and, A and B has become equal, right? So this is what we have to do. I hope the logic part is clear for you. So now there is nothing much in this question. If the logic is clear, then simply you can write the code for the same. So let's have a look on the code part. Even. So here you can see this is our function transform having two string values A as well as B. So first of all, uh, we have to make sure that whether it is possible to convert a string A to B or not. If it is not even possible, then uh, we don't have to do anything, right? We have to simply return minus one. So for that confirmation, what we are doing, we are taking two values, S1 as well as S2. And also here in M and N, we are storing the length of A as well as in N, we are storing the length of B. So if M not equal to N, simply return minus one. Uh, here, what we are doing is we are doing a summation of the summation of the ASCII values, right, of the characters that we do have in a string A and a string B. So S1 is storing the summation of the characters that we do have in a string A and S2 is storing the summation of the characters that we do have in a string B. Now here we are simply checking that if S1 not equal to S2, so we have to simply return minus 1. If that is not the case, then we are simply continuing with the logic that we discussed. So I is pointing to M minus 1, M is belongs to, M belongs to what? A. And J is pointing to N minus 1, right? See, this is for the count, count purpose, like how many num number of operations would be needed. So here we are having this while loop. We have to continue in this loop till the time I value is greater than or equal to 0 and J value is greater than or equal to 0. So see, if the character, if the ith character and Jth character, they both are equal. 
right so what we are doing is we are simply reducing the value of i as well as j if that is not the case so what we are doing is we are doing c plus plus as well as we are decrementing the value of i right and after coming out of this loop we are simply returning the value of c okay so i hope the code part is, is uh, clear for you right so thank you so much for watching this video guys keep learning keep preparing thank you for watching don't forget to join our telegram channel and please please do consider subscribing my channel thank you everyone